Right, so we are continuing on after the previous um, video. I have just done one that looked at simply the achieved questions, and this one is looking at the merit questions. So if you're looking to step it up from achieved to merit, this is the video for you. Okay, so we have this um, on this differentiation paper for level three calculus, the merit questions are always part C and D. So when you're ready to go on to merit questions, those are the ones that you want to aim at. In question one, two, and three, it will be part C and D. Right, so we've got parametric equations in this one here. So the first thing that we want to do is differentiate each with respect to type of question that I'm using on this is not to go x dash, but to actually specify that it's differentiating x with respect to t um, so that we can keep our notation clear of what we're doing. So this is 2 ln t plus 2. So if we differentiate that, we get 2 over t plus 2. And if we differentiate y with respect to t, we get 3t squared plus 2. Now we're looking for the gradient of the curve, which will be dy by dx. And to get that, we need dy by dt times dt by dx. So that is 3t squared plus 2 multiplied by 2 over, oops, I didn't flip it. Um, so this is dt by dx, so we need to flip that over, t plus 2 over 2. Then we want to know the gradient of the curve at the origin. So this is when x equals 0, dy by dx uh, will be equal to t plus 2, 3t squared plus 2, over 2, but we don't know what t is yet. So we need to work out at x equals 0, what would t be? So if x was 0, 2 ln t plus 2 would be equal to 0. So ln t plus 2 equals 0. Raise both sides um, to base e to get rid of that ln. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so t is equal to minus 1. I'll just separate that off to the side there. So dy by dx, we're working it out when t is 1. So we want minus 1 plus 2 times by 3 times minus 1 squared plus 2 all over 2. So we're putting in that parameter of t, and that gives us that dy by dx comes to 5 over 2. Now on this question, if you got as far as this bit here of knowing what dy by dx was, that was worth a u mark for achieved and if you went through putting in the right value of t and got the right answer at the end, that gives you the R mark for the merit. OK, part D. If the diagonals on the faces of a cube are increasing at a rate of 10 millimeters per second, how fast are the edges of the cube increasing? So we have a rates of change question. Let's start by taking a little snapshot of what we think this looks like. So the diagonals of the cube uh, we've got the rate of increase there. Let's call that y, and each of the sides of the cube are x. So that we've been told is how fast the diagonal is increasing. So that's the change of y over time, and that is equal to 10. Um, we can link x and y together. y will be um, x squared plus x squared, and then square root it or in other words, the square root of 2x squared. That's just using Pythagoras. And I'm going to turn that into to the power of a half. Um, now, we want to work out the how fast the edges of the cube are increasing. So we want dx by dt. If we start with dy by dt, we will need to multiply that by. Um, we need to get rid of the dy because we want no y's in this dx by dt, so we'll cancel that through by putting that on the bottom, and we need to introduce dx. So to be able to get that, we need to work with this formula where we've got um, y is something in relation to x. So let's go back over to this y equals thing up here. Now, um, if I want to tidy this up a bit, if this is to the power of a half, this is 2 to the power of a half, which is root 2, and x squared to the power of a half just cancels. So this is just root 2x. So if we were working out dy by dx, that becomes simply root 2. All right, so back over here to working out dx by dt. dy by dt was 10. 
dx by dy, well, dy by dx is root 2, so we need to flip it for dx by dy, 1 over root 2. Um, and then if you pop that into your calculator, you will get 7.07, um, and the rate we've got, the measurement of this is in millimetres, and the time is per second. Question two, part C, is one that's looking at these graphs. I love these, these questions with the graphs. I think that they are one of the simplest ways to get a merit point on, on this paper. Um, really spend some time understanding how to interpret these graphs, and you've got a solid merit in the bag. OK, so um, first thing is we want to know, uh, we're going to use this graph to find the uh, limit as we approach x equals minus 2. So up here on the graph, let's take a look. If we were coming from the, the left towards minus 2 and the right towards minus 2, what would be happening on our graph? So our line would be heading towards this same point. Now you can forget about the fact that there's a hole there. Um, that's not important when we're looking at limits. We're looking for where the graph is heading towards. And from both the left and the right, this is heading towards the minus 1 point. So the limit as we go towards x equals minus 2, is minus 1. Now for part 2, we want any values of x where there isn't a limit, so where we can't do what we just did. So we're looking for places where there are breaks in the graph, where we're not heading towards the same value from the left and the right. So here we've got a break in the graph coming from the left and the right, we're heading towards different um, directions. We've got this break happening just here. So when x equals 0, we don't have a limit, so there's one. Um, then if we take a look at um, this, this portion of the graph here, heading there from the left and the right of the graph, they're going to different points. So that happens when x is 1. And we'll see if there's anywhere else. Uh, no. As we go across that graph, everywhere else that we go to, if we were going from the left and the right, we would get the same values. So it's just... Um, 0 and 1. Part 3, any values of x where f of x is continuous but it has no derivative. So that means that the graph carries on, there's no breaks in it, but we couldn't differentiate it there. So let's take a look at there. So anywhere that's continuous but not differentiable means we're looking for places where there's sharp corners, um, and that is happening right here. So that's when x equals 4. OK, for part four, we want the values of x where the second derivative is equal to zero. It happens when we have a point of inflection where the rate of change of the gradient changes. And that happens right here, where we go from it being um, a local maximum and it starts turning into a local minimum. So that right there at x equals three. And the last part the values of x where the second derivative is less than zero, zero means we are looking for a local maximum. So that, uh, and it means any part of the curve, not just where that maximum is, but where have we got that, um, this shape of the parabola, a maximum shape happening. So that's going from x equals 1 up to x equals 3. We have a bit of a, the curve that's a minimum here, a bit of a curve that's the minimum um, there. This is the only place we get that maximum, so it's from 1 to 3. Right, we've got these two tangents to the curve, and we're told that they are perpendicular, so that means they cross at 90 degrees. Um, and so we can get the, the gradient um, of each of these by differentiating the, the curve. So the gradient function for the curve will be x minus 4, just by differentiating this bit up here. OK, now um, we're told that q is the point 6, 2. So when x equals 6, we can get the gradient of this first tangent here. So when x is 6, dy by dx is equal to 2. So the gradient of the line, the tangent that goes through q, that gradient is 2 which means that the gradient oh, gradient through p 
will be the negative reciprocal of that minus a half. So if we apply the two things we know about the gradient that goes through P, we know that it, it follows this function of X minus four, and we know that it's equal to minus a half. So the gradient function will be equal to minus a half. We want to know when does that happen? Well, that happens when X is 3.5. So 3.5 is your X coordinate of P. Right, question three, part C is parametric equations. So let's go ahead and differentiate X and Y with respect to T to a, a fairly straightforward one. So we'll move quickly through. Then dy by dx is dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. So that will be three cos t multiplied by one over minus two sine t. So when t is equal to pi by four, we substitute that into this equation here. And we will get dy by dx is equal to negative 3 over 2. You just do that by substituting it in on your calculator, but make sure your calculator is in radians because we have our value as pi by 4. All right, 3 part D is um, another rates of change question. So we're given some information in the question here. We want to try and pick out the rates we've been told about. So we're told about the liquid coming out of the cone. So um, the volume is decreasing over time at a rate of minus 2. The rate we're being asked to find out about is the depth of the liquid. So we'll call that the height. So this will be the how the height is changing over time when um, the time is 8. Oh, no not when the time is 8, when the height is 8. So let's start building up that puzzle. We want dh by dt. We've got dv by dt. So we need to multiply dv by dt by dh and divide by dv. So we can cancel out the dvs and just be left with dh by dt. So we need something that links the height and the volume. Well, the volume of the cone is um, on your formula sheet, and that's a third pi r squared h. We've nearly got something we can work with here, but we have two variables there. So first thing is we need to turn r into something in terms of h. Now we can do that using similar triangles on our cone. So we have this similar triangle situation going on. If that um, height shrunk, so would the radius, and it would be proportional. So our radius to height ratio is that the height is four times the radius, or in other words, r uh, is h over four. So then if we put that into the volume, we get a third pi of h over four squared times by h, which then becomes one over 48 pi um, h cubed. Okay, from now uh, we can do we can do dv by dh by differentiating this thing. So it becomes 3 over 48 pi h squared. 3 over 48 simplifies to 1 over 16. OK, let's go back to what we wanted, which was dh by dt using this chain rule that we have started off with. That will be dv by dt multiplied by dh by dv so that's this one, but flipped over. So that'll be 16 over pi h squared. And remember back in the question, we were doing it when the height is 8. So we substitute that in now. So we get minus 32 over pi times 8 squared. And that comes to um, negative 1 over 2 pi or minus 0.159. And we'll just check on the units. So our height is decreasing at a rate of 0.159 centimeters per second.